Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be working on pruning three different types of hydrangeas, smooth or arborescence, panicle, and macrophylla. I've got two macrophyllas, which normally don't do well for us in our area, but I planted some in containers last year and they have beautiful buds and I want to get those cleaned up. While we're in this area, I'm also going to work on cutting back our pink mink clematis, which are on those trellises back there it'll look so much better. It's kind of soggy out today. We got a ton of rain yesterday and last night, uh, but we have a 50 degree high today and a beautiful 10 day forecast. So you can see based on how many dried blooms are on these plants that these were spectacular last year. We had uh, fewer days over 100 degrees and it was just, it was more mild. We had a little bit more rain and these responded beautifully. Now these, the arborescence hydrangea and panicle hydrangeas bloom on new wood. So pruning them late winter, early spring, or even later in the spring, once the buds swell a little bit more is the best time. Macrophyllas, you have to be much more careful with. Those typically bloom on old wood and if you prune them wrong, you can prune off blooms for the next year. Um, so I'll go over that when we get to those. But the panicle and arborescence type hydrangeas, they're kind of a no worry type hydrangea, which I love, and they do the best for us in our area. So when we prune our arborescence or panicle hydrangeas, our goal is to take about a third of the plant down and to clean out any spindly, broken, or crossing branches. So what we do is we come in here, you can see the last year's bloom, this is a perfect example, and we follow the branch down. Look at that beautiful set of buds right there. That's what you wanna look for. And if you feel more comfortable waiting until later in the season, they will have more green on them and it will help you determine where the strongest set of buds are, but these are looking really good for this time of year. So that's what you do, you follow the stem back, find a nice set of buds. There's also a set here and there's a set down here. And then you want to determine about what a third is of your branch. I'm going to take mine right here and you make your cut, whoops, make your cut just above that set of buds. Like that. And then we'll get two nice branches and blooms from this stem. Stuff that looks like this, see how spindly those are? I don't want the plant to send energy into those. So those go away. This branch is sort of spindly, but I want to keep it because it's in a good spot. So again, I follow the stem back, find a nice set of buds that only has one bud. So we're gonna go down to the next set, which is right here and make our cut. Let's do one more. You can see last year's bloom, follow the stem back. You can see the segments. See, there's no buds on that segment. Follow it down, there's a nice set. There's a nice set. And I wanna do about a third, so I'm gonna take mine right here. Perfect. And then I spend a little bit of time getting into the center and cutting out any thin branches that I don't want to keep. And then see these right here? These are kind of crisscrossing. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one out and this one out. Now this branch is kind of free of everything else and it's got more space and airflow. So that's how you prune an arborescence and a panicle type hydrangea. I will show you a couple of panicles really quick. I thought we would just run through each thing we're going to prune today and talk about it before I actually do it. That way all the information is <laughs> at the very beginning and you don't have to wade through my whole project today to find it. So right around here, we have our limelight panicle hydrangeas. And first off, I mean, if you get in here close, you can see what happens when you prune every winter and you prune out spindly stuff and you just maintain that schedule. You end up with super thick branching that's very supportive and kind of necessary to keep these plants going and looking really good. And here's its neighbor. Look at those branches. Beautiful. I do try to keep in mind overall shape when I'm pruning. Usually I try to end up with a little mounds or domes. Hydrangeas tend to end up looking like a vase though, kind of like a V in the end. But the instructions are the exact same thing. You can find your bloom from last year, follow the stem back. You can see last year's cut right there. And so we've got a really nice set of buds right here. But I don't know, I might take it down a little bit further. The thing with these is that limelights want to grow, what, like six to eight feet tall, and they would block these windows. So I do a little bit more of an aggressive prune on these to keep them in size check. So because I left my cuts a little higher last year, I think I might go down one from that. So that was last year's set of buds. I'm going to follow it down to this right here and make my cut. And wherever I make my first cut, that kind of determines where I look to make the rest of my cuts throughout the whole process. So like this next one, you can see last year's cut and the two branches that came off of it. I'm gonna follow it down like that. And I'll clean up any 
spindly things. In fact, I'm going to clean this one out as well. So I end up with branches that look like this. There's a lot of space around each one. There's no broken spindly branches near them. And then I just keep going for the whole thing. Okay, so that was just for arborescence and panicula hydrangeas. Macrophyllas, you have to be so much more careful. There are some that uh, bloom on old and new wood. I still feel like you should be careful with those as well. Uh, but you can really see on this one, and I'm thankful for this, you can see where the buds are for this next year. Here it is. This is the Blue Enchantress Hydrangea. Absolutely gorgeous. Let me show you where the buds are here. Okay, so you can see last year's bloom here. And I'm thankful that the buds are as big as they are right now. It's going to make it very easy. So you follow the branch down and there's no buds at these two nodes right here. So I'm just going to cut it right above the very first set of buds. You can see there's another set down below but I'm gonna cut it right here. Let's look at another one. So there's last year's bloom. We're gonna follow it back. There's no buds here, but look at these right here. They look beautiful. Oop, I'm gonna cut right above them. And one more. So we've got the bloom here. We follow it back. First set of buds are right here. See them easier if I pull the leaves off. Okay, you can see that right there. Make our cut. I am gonna do the same thing in that I will go in and clean out any spindly growth that I don't want to keep and or anything that's broken or crossing, that sort of thing. The best time to prune your macrophylla hydrangeas is after their early summer bloom. So you can go in, make your cuts, they still have time to form their buds for next year bloom, and then you don't touch them winter or spring. Uh, in this case, I just, I just didn't get to it. And if you have a hard time determining on a macrophylla where the buds are, the best thing is just to prune right underneath their bloom. And that way, um, you know, you're like this, like just clip that dead bloom off and you can go in later and clean up those little stems wherever they don't leaf out and start producing growth. Um, that's just like if you just are not feeling comfortable with it at all. In our case, we have beautiful buds on this plant and it's very clear where the cut needs to be made. We've got another one right here and then our pink mink clematis. So I know this is kind of off subject, off hydrangea subject, but these are awesome because they're kind of a no brainer prune. You prune them back to about 18 inches late in the winter and you apply fertilizer. I'm actually not going to fertilize today. We're going to do that probably later on this month, like toward the end of February when things start putting on a little bit more active growth. Uh, that way, if we get a ton of rain or that sort of thing, it won't wash any of it away. But we'll come in here and take a look. You know, you can kind of follow the branch up. 18 inches is about here. You do want to leave one set of buds. So you can see, I hope you can see, there's a nice strong set of buds right, right underneath these leaves. So you gotta take the leaves off right there. So we'll come in on each one of these branches and make our cut right above it. And once we make all of our cuts down here, I can just pull all of these vines and cut them off the trellis up here. When you're pruning clematis, just be mindful of the variety you have. Uh, if you're not sure how to prune that variety, Google it, because there are three different classifications of uh, clematis. Some you do not want to cut back this hard. Uh, so just be mindful of that. This is just a very easy one. I like to plant plants that are like kind of those no fuss pruning sort of plants. <laughs> okay guys, so now I'm going to get down to the work of this. We're just going to prune. I don't even think I'm going to rake or anything underneath these hydrangeas. We'll do that another day. I just want to move through as many as we can.
I just finished this section. I thought we could walk through it before we move on to the next section. Oh, it's looking so much cleaner over here. It took a little bit longer than I thought, as projects normally do, because I ended up uh, pruning back some roses that I think we're gonna either move or rehome. I cut back some uh, smoke bush. I cut back another couple roses. I cleaned out some pots, you know. So right here, there are five lemon zest roses and they come out with a really pretty first flush of blooms. They're just little yellow, just sweet roses, uh, but they just don't do a whole lot for the rest of the season. And that could be because this tree has grown quite a lot. So they aren't getting enough sun. So I kind of took them back pretty hard. They were, they were pretty tall. Uh, so we'll either, move them out maybe to the south garden or find a new home for them the hydrangeas are looking so great i thinned them out quite a lot in some years i do more than other years just kind of depending on on what they've done prior year broken branch that i missed but i'm really happy with how these look i'm excited and i'm seeing bulb uh, little shoots everywhere i was trying really hard to not step on things i cut back a rose here on this side and i cut just some really long branches that that rose had back there. I'll take that down further later. And then over here, we got our macrophylla hydrangeas, <laughs> cheddar, all trimmed up. Now, in order to trim them above the buds that were visible, there are a couple of longer branches, which it may not be worth it to keep those four blooms just so that we can maintain shape. But I thought I would leave them just so I could show you, you know, all of these branches cut right above where there's a nice set of buds. So we should have some really pretty blooms. When I bought these last year, it was kind of a moment of weakness because macrophyllas just traditionally don't do very well for me, but they were in such beautiful bloom. It was mid-May. I bought these two, plus I have four more uh, that I tucked behind this boxwood hedge and they were awesome all season long. And I'm so excited to see pliable, big, beautiful buds on these. I think that it's going to be a really pretty show again. And then I cleaned out these pots a little bit. There was some spent uh, Dusty Miller and some spent asparagus fern. I didn't clean all the leaves out. I'll do that a little bit later, as well as in this space. I've got some Lamiastrum, which is really pretty. It's like grows higher than Lamium, and it has a little pale yellow bloom. They're really pretty and wonderful for a shady location. And there's also hostas in here. You wouldn't know it right now, but I think they're patriots. They're really pretty. Um, we've got a tree that we still need to pot up and we've got a house that needs to be cleaned. Oh my word. We are on the painter's list to have our house painted this spring. So <laughs> I think that will be nice and I'm sure that they're going to take after it. They've got to scrape like our back. I mean, there's just, <sighs> yeah, there's a lot of work that they need to do and it's going to look so, so nice. It's been needing to be done, uh, for the last few years and it just keeps getting put off for other bigger projects. So anyway, this is the spring that we're gonna do that. So now we're gonna move to the front of the house. We'll do the limelight hydrangeas, and then I've got a row of little lime punch along the west side that uh, we will tackle as well.
Okay, over here on the west side with the little lime punch hydrangeas, I actually started first by cutting back the Autumn Joy Sedum, which is in the center of both of these containers. So pretty in the spring. I planted the sedum in these pots in fall of 2022, and they came up last spring and they were just so pretty. I thought it would be fun to see how they did because I don't have these set up on drip or I didn't when I planted them up initially. Uh, and sedum is so forgiving and you hardly have to water it. But this is a pretty shaded spot and I didn't know how it would do, but it did beautifully right here. It gets just a little bit of afternoon sun, uh, which is just enough to keep them happy. And the hydrangeas are still on the small side. You can see the carpet of juniper berries that we've got from our massive juniper tree right here. It looks like we got hail or something. But some of these, like this one, I don't know, it was alive last year. We'll see what happens this year. From about this point on though, they just get stronger and stronger, the hydrangeas had way more blooms on them, much thicker stems. So we'll see what happens there. And then we came up here and got all five of the limelights done. There's four right here. And then one that's on the kind of wraps around the corner there. Now, after we have our house painted this spring, we will be trimming these down in the fall. Just keep that in mind. If you leave your dried blooms up and you've got a white house, this is what they did to ours. <laughs> so they stay in the siding. We've tried everything to get it off. So a fresh coat of paint's gonna be what has to, you know, take care of it this time. And then I won't be pruning them probably back this hard in the fall, but we'll at least come in and remove all the blooms. And then while I was up here, I decided to come around the corner here. I trimmed back, I've got some uh, oh so easy Italian ice roses, three of them up in here. I got those kind of trimmed a bit, trimmed the lavender hedge here. I think that's it on this side. Whenever I have a little bit of extra room in my pop-up bag or whatever, I always try to make every trip count. So if I've got extra room, I always try to find something else that I can get done in that same space. Now there's only two other areas that we've got some paniculate, they paniculate, both paniculata. We've got some uh, little lime hydrangeas on the north side of the chicken coop. And then we've got a few of the, they're an arborescence, Invenza Bell Ruby hydrangeas underneath a lilac. So let's go get those done and then I think we'll be done for today. This is our second gator load. I've already gone and dumped it once. There they are. They had a lot of blooms on them this past year. So let's get these cleaned up. So in this area, we have one, two, three Invincible Ruby Hydrangeas. There were five. I just did not anticipate how much shade this area gets. And we've just found that hydrangeas need a lot of sun, like full sun, six to eight hours plus of sun with sufficient water to be the most the best performers. So these are kind of just like dwindling and I probably should move on, but this whole area might change. You know, we were struggling with this uh, honey locust tree the past two years. We're gonna see how it leafs out this spring, but it's possible that might go. If that goes, this lilac's gonna go as well, and we're gonna do a complete refigure of this whole area, which I've got some really fun ideas for. I don't wanna have to implement them, but we might have to. In the meantime, let's just get these hydrangeas done. Woo! We're gonna have some action on our hellebores here real soon. Oh my goodness, you guys, this just caught my eye. <gasps> Look, what a treat. Look at how gorgeous these are. 
Oh my goodness. Oh, this is why I love hellebores right here. Very beginning of February. And they usually last with good color through May, maybe even into June. I just love it. Hey, you guys, that is gonna do it for today. We got the two little limes done on the north side of the uh, chicken coop, the three Invincible Rubies. We found our first blooming hellebore. That is a good day. We still have a ton of hydrangeas to prune out in the south garden, but I've just been kind of tackling those as I come upon them when I'm doing my flower bed clean out out there. And then we also have some oak leaf hydrangeas up in the Persephone garden, which I will show you those when I get to that flower bed. I don't do much pruning on those because they're kind of like a macrophylla. They only bloom on old wood, so you've got to be careful. I basically just remove the spent blooms and that's it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful just walking through the process of trimming some of these things. And we even got a few extra bonus plants cleaned up. I feel like this year we're just so on top of it and I love it. I love, and it's just because of the weather. There. I mean, the sun is trying to burn through the clouds right now. It was overcast all morning. So I think I'm gonna go get the kids <laughs> inside. They've been playing with Aaron and we'll come out here and just go for a big long walk and enjoy the sunshine, um, enjoy the rest of the day. So thank you again. We will see you in the next video. Bye.